Well, ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's lesson the very first lesson in eighth grade social studies and today we are going to learn how the 13 english colonies in the united states or what became the united states were originally established so let's go ahead and write our essential question across the top of the notes today and that essential question is, how were the 13 English colonies established in America? And that should go across the top of your Cornell notes. And I will pause for just a moment while I wait for you to write that down. The first thing we do in any lesson in social studies is review our vocabulary. And we learned our vocabulary first and now that you know the vocabulary, when I actually use it in the lesson, you will actually understand what I am talking about. So this will be a quick review, and you do not have to write this down because you've already done it. So this is just a review. First word is cash crops, and that would be products such as tobacco, sugar, and cotton raised in large quantities to be sold for profit. Our second word is democratic, which is a Greek word meaning rule by the people. Our third word is slave trade, which is the business of buying, selling, and transporting human beings for sale as labor. And our fourth word is the economy, the way a society organizes the manufacture and sale of things of value, such as goods and services. I will now make pictures of these words materialize on the screen. That would be a cash crop, in that case, tobacco. Uh, when we think of democracy, we think of voting. That is how we exercise our democratic rights, which would be another word. Slave trade, I probably don't need to describe. And the economy, most of us think of money. The economy having to do with money. Uh, if you've taken personal finance class, that has a lot to do with the economy. But the economy has to do with a lot more than that. Uh, we will talk about that as time goes on. So our first question on the left side of the line as you take Cornell notes is how did the British establish their colonies in America? Uh, the first thing you need to know, and this is a very, very, very abbreviated lesson on what would be a much larger lesson if this was a full year class. But because this is a semester class, we are gonna do this very quickly. Uh, the first English colony uh, that survived was Jamestown. Uh, it was established in what is now the state of Virginia, and it was first established in 1607, which is a fairly long time ago. Jamestown was established primarily as a colony um, to make money. The people who went to Jamestown were looking to make money um, and it eventually made money selling tobacco. Now, before the tobacco arrived in Jamestown, uh, things were a bit dodgy. Uh, the colony almost did not survive. Um, they were eating their dead. They were eating tree bark. And tobacco basically saved that colony. And that is when tobacco started to get exported to the rest of the world, creating today's lung cancer situation. Um, the Puritans, which was a religious group, established the Plymouth Colony in what is now Massachusetts. So the Jamestown Colony was established for profit. The Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts, which was much farther north and therefore colder, um, was established for religious freedom. The Puritans wanted the right to practice their faith freely, which they did not feel they could do in England. Um, it was established for religious freedom because the Puritans did not want to follow the Church of England, which was the official church in England, and therefore they felt they needed to go across the ocean and plant their own flag somewhere else so they could actually be who they wanted to be and practice their faith in the way that they wanted to practice it. Um, we, of course, know the Puritans because of the story of the first Thanksgiving, um, and our mythology in America tells us that that was a celebration of Native Americans and European settlers 
uh, working together and sharing a meal harmoniously. Um, that is a very sugar-coated version of the truth because the fact of the matter is that that first Thanksgiving was actually celebrating a massacre. Um, the tribe in question had made an alliance and became allies with, there's a vocabulary word, um, the Puritans, and they worked together to defeat another tribe, which just happened to be an enemy of the tribe that the Puritans made an alliance with. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend for now, which doesn't sound as nice as, as the, the mythological Thanksgiving story that we tell elementary school students. Uh, that is a picture of the Jamestown colony. I have been there personally. I have some personal pictures of it. Uh, that is a uh, pictorial representation of the Puritans arriving on the shore in Massachusetts and thanking God for their arrival. And that would be a pictorial representation of the Plymouth colony once it was built and established. I'll go ahead and stop it there and give you time to finish your notes and ask me questions. So our next left side question is what were the three colonial regions in America? Uh, we are fast forwarding in time. Uh, Plymouth has been established, Jamestown has been established, and over time, many other colonial um, settlements are established in what became the 13 colonies. And those colonies kind of um, became their own regions with their own distinct identities. Starting with the New England colonies. The New England colonies consisted of Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire. They did not consist of Vermont. That purple area you see over here, which we now know as Vermont, back then there was no Vermont. Sorry, Bernie Sanders. Uh, the middle colonies consisted of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Okay, so those are the ones that are in orange on this map. And finally, the southern colonies consisted of Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Um, I could tell you a lot more about this, but in terms of the quiz you're going to take, this is what I expect you to know. I expect you to be able to recognize the groups of colonies and which region they are associated with. Um, I'm not going to ask you to know more than that because this is a one semester class and therefore I don't have time to teach you more about this. So this is what you absolutely need to know. And I will advance the slide now. Our next left side question is, what was the economy based on in each colonial region? So each region made its money in a slightly different way, although if we were doing a Venn diagram, there would also be similarities in the way that they uh, made their money, but um, there were differences that were more distinct than the similarities. So let's start by talking about the New England colonies. Uh, the New England colonies, um, most of the people who moved there moved there for religious freedom. So this was a very religiously pious region, um, and the people who moved there moved there specifically to be able to practice their religion the way they wanted to. So their economy was based mostly on natural resource-oriented things. Fishing, um, there was abundant fish off the coast of New England, and timber. New England was a deeply forested region, and so chopping down the trees, um, the British liked to make ships, and therefore um, the timber in the New England area was really ideal um, for building ships for the English. And by the way, when I say England and Britain, England is part of Britain. Uh, there's also Scotland, Wales, and at the time, all of Ireland. So the English were the most powerful group within what we call Britain or the United Kingdom, just so you know. Uh, the middle colonies um, were different from the New England colonies in that they were a lot more tolerant of different beliefs. Um, I will add so long as they were Christian beliefs. You pretty much could be part of any Christian denomination in the middle colonies and people would leave you alone. 
um, you did not have to kind of toe the line of whatever colony you were in and worship the way they wanted you to worship. So um, it was about as live as and let live as things got in the 13 colonies. Um, and also in the middle colonies, there was a lot more diversity. There were people from many different European countries uh, who wanted to manufacture things because there was a lot more manufacturing and making of things in the middle colonies. And so you would hear a lot more languages um, and there were a lot more faith traditions there, but they were all from Europe. So um, that would be the one similarity. Um, it wouldn't be diverse the way we think of diversity today. It was just diverse in terms of the um, languages spoken and the uh, different forms of Christianity that were followed. And of course, the southern colonies um, were very agricultural. It was a warmer area, had a longer growing season. And therefore, because of that agriculture, the southern colonies relied on the slave trade, which is one of our vocabulary words, uh, for cheap labor in order to grow their cash crops. Pretty much um, the south is where tobacco was grown. Um, and they wanted to sell that tobacco as inexpensively as possible. So by having slaves, um, they didn't have to pay their labor, and therefore they could sell their crops for less money. Um, that's just the brutal reality of it. Um, agriculture is a very labor-intensive um, economic activity, and the less you have to spend money on your labor, the more you can make profit off of your crop. We can talk about that in great detail if you want to ask me questions. So there is a picture of the pious New Englanders um, praying. Um, that is a not so great picture of New England. In fact, I would hardly qualify that as a picture. I could have done better than that. And that is a representation of the Southern agricultural economy and um, the slaves working in the fields. And I will go ahead and pause and let you finish taking these notes. So our final left side question for today is how did the colonies try new forms of government? Uh, one of the things the colonists were able to do since they were not in Europe is create their own systems of government. In Europe, pretty much all of the countries were monarchies. England was a monarchy headed by the king. France was a monarchy headed by the king. Germany did not exist yet. Um, so the nations of Europe were reliant on old school forms of government in which you had hereditary leaders carrying on their power for generation after generation. I didn't mention Spain and Portugal. They also had their kings. So that's pretty much the way things rolled in Europe. And the colonists were not forced to do the same thing. So many of the colonies actually experimented with democratic government and um, pretty much the world had not seen democratic government since the days of ancient Greece, which you may have learned about in sixth grade. So when they came up with systems where people could actually vote for their own leaders, um, that was a new and refreshing thing for many of the colonists and they, they found that they liked it. Uh, in Massachusetts, there were two leaders that were elected governor many, many times, um, and they were the first elected leaders in 13 colonies and in the Americas. Uh, one of them was named William Bradford, and the other was named John Winthrop. And since they're underlined, you can bet those are going to be on the 13 colonies test. Uh, further south in Virginia, the House of Burgesses not the House of Burgers, was the first democratic legislature in America. And by legislature, we're talking a group of people who were elected to write the laws for the colony of Virginia. Um, so that was a big deal. So William Bradford and John Winthrop more served an executive function in that they carried out the laws. And in Virginia, the House of Burgesses served a legislative function in writing the laws. Um, and both of them were chosen by the people. And by people, I'm going to be honest and say land-owning men. Back then, that's what was considered the people. 
So both uh, the House of Burgesses and these executive leaders, Mr. Bradford and Mr. Winthrop, made decisions and passed laws for their entire colony, um, and they did not um, ask the king on the other side of the ocean whether they liked that or not. So there you have um, Mr. Bradford and Mr. Winthrop. I believe it's Mr. Bradford on the left, Mr. Winthrop on the right. I always like to say that what they're wearing reminds me of what Waldo's dress code should be like. Um, and some of you have seen pictures of the old dress code and you might think that's how it was. Little joke there. And then of course, um, yeah, it is Bradford on the left and Winthrop on the right. And there we actually have a picture of the building where the House of Burgesses met in Virginia, which is a national historic landmark. And if you're ever in Virginia, you can go by and see it and say, this is where the first democratic legislature in the Americas met. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let you go ahead and finish writing these notes. But otherwise, I'm going to tell you that it is time for you to write a summary at the bottom of your notes and your summary should include one sentence for each left side question that we have in our notes and since we have four left side questions today your summary should be approximately four sentences it can be longer than that but it should be four sentences and with that I'm gonna go ahead and end our first lesson of eighth grade social studies and let you know that you're very likely going to be sharing those summaries either at the end of class or at the beginning of class tomorrow. So please write those summaries. And with that, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off for the very first time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.